Boker Tov, today's staff is staff Ben Dalton, Bob Metzias, we went for Achenu, Kol Beis Yisrael, Hanasim, Basar, Vashivya. We'll start with the Mishnah again at the bottom of Mem Gimon Beis that we learned at the end of yesterday's staff. Achol Sheiv, Nishlach Yad. If you just thought about, <clears throat> about uh, <clears throat> using, misusing, misappropriating somebody else's item that you were given as a guard. Now, <clears throat> what's the halacha there? Achol Sheiv, Yad, the God. You were given something as a to guard or to watch, or it was deposited with you, uh, and uh, you decided to use it. The Shami says you're high from that point on. The Basil says no, you're not high to actually use it. You didn't send your hand in your neighbor's uh, work, meaning his, his, his item that you took. Now, Tosas points out here that when you say, but even according to the Shami that says you're high, as soon as he had thought about it, Rashi says also, you had to tell people about it. You told somebody, I'm going to take it. We don't know what's in your mind. Uh, it's only if you told somebody. And here, Tosis also says that the machshava here is dibur. It's not simply that you told somebody in front of two aiding that they can prove it. Uh, but rather, many times, you have a you bumus also. There's a machshava, because there Rashi tells us about whether you have to certain things. Uh, here, Tosis points out, machshava is pigle also. He has to be with dibur. You have to say it. It's not enough just to think about it. Think when you say machshava alone, meaning it means without actually doing anything. You just thought about it by saying something. You did say something. If you didn't say it, then it doesn't work. You're just what was, what was floating through your mind means nothing. Mishnah goes on. Let's say you were given a barrel of wine to guard or to watch, and you uh, took a rabias, you took a small cup of wine, you took a little bit out of it, you tipped it over and took a little bit of an ishbra. Afterwards, it broke, and a mashallah rabias. You didn't really pick it up yet, so you weren't shalach biyad. According to Basilo, you weren't, even according to Beishama, you weren't planning on stealing the whole barrel, you just taking a little bit. So for that little bit, um, you, um, and you took a rabias out of there, and then the barrel broke. And a mashallah, you only paid the rabias because you weren't really shalach biyad. You didn't, shalach biyad means you have to take it, make a kinyan on it. Yeah, again, you didn't really acquire it halachically, but it's like you stole it. So it'd be a, if you picked it up enough, I'm in a bias, but it's Rebbe Misham Neikula. If you lifted up the whole the whole barrel, that means you were Sholeich Yad, and then you, even though you only took a bias, but the whole thing broke, once you picked it up, you were Sholeich Yad, you were like a Shoel in your Chayab, even on Onsen. Okay, so <laughs> that's what the mission said. The Gemara goes on, where do we get this from? Where does Beishama get this idea that if you just thought about it, meaning you didn't really do anything, but you just told somebody, oh, you know, I'm going to use that item that I was given to guard. <laughs> How do we know that just saying something means something, even though you didn't do anything yet? There's what I'll call Dvar Pesha. <clears throat> even for just the word, I'll call Dvar Pesha, right? Um, uh, that it just, just for saying something, any. Dvar means something, but it could also mean you said something. Dibur, to, Lashon of Dibur. I'll call Dvar Pesha on any uh, word of sin, of uh, misusing something over here. That's Basham Yom Malam Shechayim Just thinking about it, meaning even though you didn't do anything, you just said you're going to do it, that's, that makes you chayv right away. You were Shalayach Yad. says, no, you only chayv when you actually took it. Shenemar. If you didn't actually send your hand, you didn't actually take it. What about my words? You're looking at the words in Joel Shalach Yadam Lechzrei. What about I said, Alo, uh, it says, I'll call Dvar Pesha. What do you do with that? Right? So, um, uh, um, so, so, Basil answer, Beshamel, Velo Kvarnemer, Imlo Shalach Yadam Lechzrei. I got another pasuk, right? It says, "I'll call dvar pesha." You're right; you have dvar pesha, but I says, "I I say that it's only if I actually took it." In lo shalach yado, says it says uh, it says, "I'll call." Uh, uh, it says, "In lo shalach yado mechzrei." You actually have to send your hand; you have to do a physical thing. Mishandle. Only there are you chayav. Pardon? Mishandle. Mishandle, right. Mishandle. Right. Mishandle. Mishandle. right. Mishandle. I'll call dvar pesha. Right, right. You mishandled it, but you did it on purpose, right? Yeah. Call dvar pesha. Um, so what does Basil do with Beshamay's Pasuk? It says, I'll call Dvar Pesha, even for a word of sin, meaning you had to say something. If you if you said something, that's enough to make you chayev. That's only if he himself said something, or if he himself did something. In other words, Basil says you have to actually do something, you have to make a king, you have to lift the item 
physically take the item for you to be chayef on shlichus uh, yad for sure for misappropriating. That's that's fine if you did it yourself. Uh, what happens if you tell your evan and your shliach minayin? How do I know if they did it for you? Now, true, we have a call ain't shliach varvera, right? Ain't shliach varvera. If I send you to do something, you're responsible, not me. But over here, we have an extra pasuk telling us I'll call the rasha. Even if I told my associate, my uh, worker, my evan uh, to pick it up, and he did it, Rashi says she shliach yad v'chein also. If he did it, he actually have to do something. Again, if you're just saying something by itself doesn't mean anything. If you actually did it. You're chayev, but how do I know if it's not only if I did it, if I told somebody else to do it and they did it, that's also called shlichas yad, I'll call dvar pesha. So that's if I tell somebody else to do it and they did it on my behalf, that's also makes me chayev. They, you know, they lifted it up and gave it to me, picked it up on my behalf or whatever, then I'm also chayev, even though normally we don't ain't shlich dvar veira. But over here, this is a dvar veira that I caused it to happen, so I have some responsibility. Maybe this is an exception to Ain Sheikh Vera, just like uh, we have by Meila, uh, that uh, we have an exception because of a special Pusik. So here too, you can say it's a special Pusik. The Pusik of Moshe Shafiyot, you got to do an action, but I'll call Bar Pesha Dijim, even if I tell somebody else to do it. And he did it because you have to do an action. Otherwise, you don't have to do So the Mishnah went on to say, Who does the, uh, in this last case, uh, uh, is the no, the, the shliach lifted, lifted it up. He lifted it up. Yeah, of course. But the mishandling otherwise, if you did it, if you did, that's the mishandling. That's the mishandling. The chard the kasha. I don't know why they don't ask kasha. Ain't shiach of arveira. The answer is you have to say normally ain't shiach of arveira, but this is a special pasuk. That's what, just like meila is a special pasuk. Ain't shiach of arveira, but there's special there's exceptions to the rule. This I would say is, is maybe an exception to the rule because if you lifted it up yourself, then you did it. What's the issue? So the answer is he did it. it. You told him to do it, and he did it. It starts from the point where you told me. Well, you told him to do it. Right, right, right. If you told him to do it. In other words, if you didn't tell him to do it. When does it start? I mean, that's the question. No, no. So, no, no it's not. It's, 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 it's that it's that the you're chayiv if you did something. Here, you're chayiv even if you told somebody else to do it, and he did it. Why? Isn't that ain't sheikh of our very? Yes, I would say this is an exception to the rule. That's what I would interpret. Maybe you have some other spara for why you be chayiv, but what's what are you going to tell me that the shliach is over on, on shliach yad? Well, of course, of course, it's over shliach yad. It's even worse. It's Xela. He's not involved in it at all. He's not even your. He's not even a, a shomer over here. So I would say it's an, maybe an exception to the rule, but it's a it's a pella to me that the Mephorshim don't talk about that. Um, right. Um, yeah, I don't see why that they don't don't discuss. Amar hita sechavas. So if you if you didn't lift up the barrel that you were given to watch, you just turned it over and uh, you know you, you you tipped it on the side to get a, a cup of uh, wine out of there. Okay, so that's not shlichas yad. Obviously, you'd have to pay for the for the revias of wine that you stole, but it's not shlichas yad because you didn't lift it up. Okay, So we say afterwards. Let's say let's say you you opened up the barrel. Somebody asked yesterday about opening up the barrel. Is that shlich uh, yad, right? You could say, in a way it is, It's but you didn't lift up anything, but you did move the, you did something to the barrel. So the question over here is you didn't lift up the barrel, so it's not a regular Kenyan. However, you did cause harm to the wine. So here he says like this, if you only took a cup of wine out of the barrel, you tipped it over, you know what? And then the barrel broke, you weren't really shlich you didn't take up the barrel. However, if your action caused the whole barrel to be destroyed, if the barrel was destroyed, broke, you didn't you didn't lift it up, you didn't show you weren't shleich yad, you're not chayev. But here's the problem: the wine stays better if it's a full barrel and and it's sealed. Once the barrel is partially empty, it starts to go bad. That's that's how it works with with wine. So he says, let's say you took out a cup of wine out of the barrel, you didn't lift up the barrel, but you cause the barrel to go sour because by taking some out, you cause, so he says there, that's if it broke, you didn't lift up the barrel, you're not high if the whole barrel broke. But if the barrel, the wine went sour, what, what helped it to go bad was your arrows, meaning by taking out a cup, you've ruined the rest of it. It's like, you know, sometimes you have, I don't know, or a comparison of some sort of a food or a liquid that it stays well as long as it's sealed. But if you take a little bit out of it, 
it's the, maybe the ox the oxygenation or whatever it is causes it to go bad. Pardon? Isn't that nezik she'en be'en? It's not really noticeable. That's pretty noticeable. <laughs> yeah, but it's only, it doesn't yeah. happen right away. This yeah, yeah. Like but, oh, 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 no, but they, 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 no, okay. You mean a hezek she'en a nicker. Yeah. You can't see. Here, it's delayed, but you can see it. In other words, the stuff looks bad, too. The way it, it probably it doesn't look the same. It turns colors, it uh, bubbles up, whatever it does. It smells different. It smells yeah. different also. It's a hezek she'en nicker. It's just delayed. Not delay not penalty, not enough, delay yeah. penalty is still a penalty. We have a, we have a, a, a Canuck over here, right? right. It's still a penalty, right? Okay. <laughs> Big V of an Atalai Mena, right? Let's say you picked up the barrel. If you picked up the barrel, you were Shalayach Yad, right? You've done an action. You'd be an Atalai Mena. So if you picked up the barrel and you took out a, a cup of wine, so the Mishnah said, okay, then you're high. If the whole thing broke afterwards, you have to pay for the whole thing. You don't actually have to take it. You don't actually take the cup out of there. As long as you lifted it up, that means you were shalayach yad. According to Beisham, you only have to say that you're going to, you're going to misappropriate. According to Beisil, that we possibly like, you have to make misappropriate. Well, once you lifted it up, you're chayev. Okay, what happens if you didn't take anything out of it? That's okay. You're still chayev, right? So let me serve a shmuel. That shmuel therefore hold the shlichus yad and shlichus misar. We had the discussion already for several days. Does shlichus yad? Does misappropriation? Is it only considered misappropriated if I cause damage to it? There's some loss over here. Over here, where do you say you just said that shmuel said that if I lifted up the barrel, okay, I'm shlichus yad, but I didn't take anything yet. I, I took, I lifted it up in order to take a cup out. Misha said you lifted it up and you took a cup out. Shmuel says even if you didn't take the cup of wine out of it, you just lifted it up your chayev. Does that mean that the old shlichas yad does not need a any damage? You're still chayev, even though there's no damage. I mean, no. Shani yochad the nechli the havi hachavas kula buses lahoravias. Again, as we said before, that when you take a cup out by its a cup of wine out from the barrel, and the barrel is now partially empty, the wine can easily go bad by itself. The cup that you took out and the stuff in the barrel. So over here, when you lifted it up in order to take out the cup. It's as if you took out a cup, but you left it in there. It's better, it'll stay better. And as I'm planning to take a cup of wine out, but I'd rather not take it out now, and it'll maybe go bad, and the wine, the barrel go bad. I'll leave it in there. So it's as if he took it out and left it in there. In other words, he's happy over here. Normally, you do need a loss, but the loss over here is inferred, or it's going, or it's delayed, right? Because Shainuch the Nechel, he's happy that the whole the whole barrel of wine will be a basis, will be a platform or a base, a base. For the Raviyah, so it's like he took it out and left it in there. But Ravashi, what about, okay, that's what you say, I understand, a cup of wine stays better in the barrel, and the barrel stays better if it's full. What about, I lifted up a, um, a somebody asked me to guard their purse of, of uh, money, uh, and I lifted it up in order to take out, I was going to steal a, din, a, a dinner, a coin out of there. Ma, what do you say? Hamur lo minter el Wine is only guarded with other wine. If it's by itself or you emptied out part of the barrel, it's going to go bad. Avosuza minter, but a coin makes no difference if it's in the purse or not in the purse. And therefore, if I didn't take out the coin, I didn't really shalech yad. Can't say, well, if I lifted up the purse in order to take out the coin, is that as if I took out a coin already and I just left it in there because it stays better? Or do you say, no, coins by itself. I don't, coin doesn't need a purse. It's not like wine. Odilma shiny terusa donikim terusa the dinner. It's easier to keep all your money in one place. If you have your money in a purse, it's not going to get lost. If you have it in your pocket or just to lose, it might fall out. So is uh, would you say that taking take picking up a, a wallet in order to remove a coin from there, but you haven't removed the coin, is that shlichas yad? If you hold the shlichas yad, nisa chasar or not, take where that question stands. Hanachamafka, that ends the third parak. Now we begin hazov, which is a famous parak, a very, probably the most difficult parak in all of Bab Metziah because the concepts are difficult. Let's start with the basic concept. We've learned that when it comes to karka, how, are you, how do you uh, acquire land or a house, anything attached to the ground? Kesav mm shtar -hmm. You can pay for it, you can do just a document, the bill of sale, or you can show uh, a deed or just show ownership, lock it up, put a fence around it. That's when it comes to karka. We're talking about here about metalflin, movables. How do you acquire movables? You need a special kinyan, a mashifa. You need to pull it, uh, if it's a heavy item, if it's too heavy to pull, you can cause it to, or just hand over the reins if it's an animal of some sort. Or if it's any movable, 
buy, you go to the makolet and buy a loaf of bread or peros or whatever. So you do mashicha, you pull, you pull it to yourself or you lift it up. What about money? I pay for it. Well, that doesn't work. Either it doesn't work because uh, the Torah says that mashicha doesn't, that only mashicha works based on a pasuk. That's a that's a machlok that we'll have Rishlakish and Rabbi Yochanan. Shlokish said it's minatora that way. Rabbi Yochanan says really minatora money acquires it too if I paid for it. However, there's a, the rabbis made a say that money alone doesn't work. The famous line of Shema Yisrafu Chitecha Balia, meaning this: You bought for me a silo full of wheat. You paid cash. Okay, it's yours. Now you didn't pick it up yet until you get a trucker and you want me to hold it for a month or two. By the time you come, it burnt down. And when you come for it, I'll say, well, your wine, your your uh, your stuff burnt down. Not my problem. It was yours, right? So we don't want that to happen. So we said, therefore, the Kenyan doesn't work. If you just paid me for it, you didn't acquire it. It's still mine. So if it burnt down, it's my stuff that burned down. Right? It's I, on property. Pardon? It's on, your it's on my property, but okay. But it doesn't mean it's where it is now. And as you pay, you, you if you buy, if we have a deal, you can leave some. You have something on my property that I sold you. I sold you legitimately and all that. We have, we shook hands on it. We have a star and all that. It's still my property. It could, it's still yours and you can have stuff in my property. So here, because that we don't want that to happen, the rabbi said that, you know what? Until you pull it, until you acquired physically, make a Kenyan on it, it's still mine. So therefore, I'll, I, if, if a fire starts, I'll have an interest in saving it and uh, in saving the uh, tour, saving the produce because it's my loss, not your loss. Okay. But either way, whether you say that uh, Minatora Kesef does work on the uh money does work to acquire, like Rabbi Yochan, but it's a Zerud Rabbanan that money doesn't doesn't work. Meaning, if you paid me for something, as we'll see in the Mishnah, for Metalklin, either one of us can go back with the deal. The deal's not final until you make a Kenyan. That's Rabbi Yochan's opinion. Rish Lakish says, even Minatora, you need Mashiach. Okay. But either way, whether you hold it to Rabbanan, Rabba, money alone doesn't work. If you acquired money, it doesn't work. So what is what does work? Pulling the making a Kenyan physically on the on the merchandise on the produce. Okay. Here we come into now we get into the question of what's money, and what's produce. Well, produce was pretty obvious. What produce is usually you know what produce is, right? But sometimes money itself can be the produce because what's money? What's what's the uh, what was the, somebody defined money as the uh, the most uh, liquid asset? at a given point in time. What is money, right? Money could be uh, chits, could be coupons, could be anything, right? Uh, gold, diamonds, what do you, what's, what's, it's all money, right? What is money? What defines money? Because we have these these uh, paper that the government prints, you know, coins, right? Crypto. Right, right, crypto, <laughs> right, 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 right. If, if it's most liquid thing. So money is usually the, the most liquid thing, the most liquid asset at a given point in time. Okay, so here we're going to deal with the Gemara. And of course, in the Gemara, they didn't have notes. Those are the things that didn't mean anything, uh, paper, money. It's all, it's all uh, you know, metal coins. So here we get into the question. Okay, we once we've just said that a Kenyan is only made when there's a deal being made, you have to make a Kenyan on the merchandise, not on the money, right? If I give you the money, that's not a deal. A deal we, either one of us can go back on the deal if, I, if you didn't make the Mashiach, if you didn't pull the merchandise. So what happens if I have silver coins and gold coins? What happens there? Which is the money? So the Mishnah says, Hazov, Konas, Akesef, Akesef, Ena, Konas, Hazov. When it comes to silver coins and gold coins, the silver coins are really the most current, meaning they're, they're the currency. They're the ones that circulate most. And therefore, if you're buying gold with silver coins, the gold is the merchandise. Therefore, you have to make a Kenyan on the gold, then then the if I'm if I'm selling you uh, gold for sil for silver coins, um, the way the deal is done is you have to pull the you have to make a mashiach kenyan on the gold because that's the merchandise, and then you owe me the money. That I, I don't I don't physically have the money, but you owe me the money. The deal's the deal's a final deal once you pull that because the gold is the merchandise and the silver is the coins because the coins are the things that are more current. So that's what the Mishnah says, but we're, it's not going to be a simple issue because we're going to see other opinions. Hazov Konas Akesef. Again, if I made a Kenyan on the gold, I acquire the money, meaning I, there's a chiyah for the guy who bought it, who bought the gold to give me the money because the gold is the merchandise. That's the Kenyan. Hakesef Ainakonas Hazov. Let's say I took the silver 
silver coins from you first, and I have to give you the gold? No, that's not a deal because the, that kesef is the coins. That's money. Okay, so the zov is the merchandise. The kesef is the money. So if you make a kenyan on the merchandise, then you owe me the money. But if I took your money, no, the deal's not final. It doesn't acquire the gold. Similarly, on a chosheth kon is a kesef. When it comes to when it comes to uh, copper coins, again, the copper is considered the merchandise. The gold, the silver is considered the, the money. So on the choshes, if you made a kinyan on the, the choshes on the copper, on the merchandise, that, that means that the person who bought the copper coins owes the money. But I guess if I had a the but if you gave me silver coins, which is the money, you don't acquire the choshes yet because that's money. Money does not work in a kinyan of metalplin. Most arose konas Let's say you have Poor, bad money, money that's uh, been obliterated, that's defective. So that's really merchandise now. It's not, it's not, it doesn't circulate well. What circulates well, again, money is the most liquid asset at a given point in time. So money means here, so silver coins work better than, than obliterated coins. By Yafa saying the coin is a So again, good money does not acquire bad money. <laughs> That's a that's a, here the good money the bad money is uh, I mean literally good money versus literally bad deplete you know depleted money bad money again that's merchandise so if you pay silver coins for bad merchandise that doesn't work a simon what's on a simon a blank before it's like a coin before there was a image stamped onto it right mm -hmm. like we used to have the simonim for those, those old Israelis remember that right yeah they call that because that's not, it's a blank. So a simon kones amatea, because a simon is a merchandise. So if you made a kinyan on simon, then then the, the other guy owes you the, the money, the coins. But matea and a kones a simon doesn't work the other way. Again, coin money does not buy, does not make a kinyan. Metalplin kones amatea again. Metalplin, it's a general thing. Metalplin merchant movables acquire the money. Money matea and a kones metalplin. The, the gra takes out the zak. Call metalplin kones as it now. My, uh, merchandise can be exchanged for one for one another. We both agree. I'll give you my shirt. You give me my. You give me your, uh, the pants. Barter. So can you? But it's bartering, like chalipin, like we do with the rabbi when we're going to uh, sell him the rights to sell our chametz, right? So that's also it's chalip. We're going to talk about chalipin in the Gemara. How does that work? If I, if I uh, you pull, you uh, made a kenyan on my fruits, blonos and osamos, and you didn't pay me for the money, any yochalach, so we can't go back on it. That's what we mean over here, that if you agree to buy uh, my, my apple for a dollar and you made a kenyan on the, pay, on the payrolls, on the apple, uh, you can't, you still, you owe me the money. You can't go back on the deal. Not the most, but if you gave me the money, but you didn't take the apple yet, you'll, you can go back on the deal. You can go back on it, but you're not a good guy. Because once you shook hands and you said whatever, or whatever you said over there, right? Once you shook hands and agreed to a deal and you went back on it, okay, you can go back on it. You know, technically, you can go back on it legally, but the rabbi said, the one who paid back the the sinners of the uh, generation of the flood or the generation of the Dora Flaga that built the tower up, right? Who also the God will also pay back Mimisha and Omar A person doesn't stand by his word. It's an important thing to stay by your word, even though technically, if you paid for Metalplin and you didn't, you didn't make a Mashiach on it yet, you didn't make a kinyan on it yet. You can go back on the deal. But the rabbi said you get what's called a mishapara. A mishapara means you'll get cursed. Reb Shimon disagrees with the Tanakam. Reb Shimon Omer calls Shakasa Biyada Yadal Hasana. Whoever has the money can go back on the deal. Meaning, meaning that um, if, the, uh, if you paid for something and didn't get it yet, the person who received the money, the seller, he can go back and he has the money, but you can't go back on the deal. We just said that you can go back on the coin to Tanakama. If I paid for something that didn't make a Kenyan, I can go back on the deal. I'll get a Misha Parva, I can go back on the deal. Point of Shimon, only the one who has the money can go back on the deal. Okay. Says the Gemara. Masni, listen, Masni, you know, Rebbe had a son, Rab Shimon. Rab Shimon, right? Rab Shimon uh, ben Rebbe, ben Yudanosi was his son, also a famous rabbi. And Rebbe taught his son, Bray, Hazov Konas Akesef, like our Mishra said, that Zohav, gold coins, are considered merchandise. So they, the Kenyan on them makes, makes the other person responsible to pay for it. Omale, Rebbe, so Rebbe, so his father, so the son said to his father, Rebbe, doesn't mean he called him by his name because he was called Rebbe. He called Rebbe, my, he meant my master, right? 
you taught us in your youth, younger, you taught us the other way around. That a kes of konus has all. Whoa, now we're switching things around. See, now you have in your mind that the kes is money and the, the silver coins are money and the zav is merchandise. You taught us the other way around that the kes is merchandise and zav gold coins are better. A kes of konus, that's real good, that's real money. A kes of konus has all. The tachs of the now you're going to teach us in your old, in your old age has all. Konas a kesef, the other way around, the way the mission, our mission reads. So the Mafarshim explained, the Mashal says that what what was the what was that a little bit of a chutzpah to talk to your father that way? Hey, when you were young, you taught us the other way around. Now you're taught us this way. He meant it as a question, meaning this: Are you changing your opinion? You're attracting your opinion, or did you forget? Possibly you forgot. Maybe you know you forgot. Can you let us know? He didn't answer him, which means he didn't forget. He was serious. He changed his opinion. So the Gemara says he changed his opinion, and therefore that's what he had learned from Rebbe, who was a Talmud of a mayor. He learned that from the mayor. What was his faro? What was his faro? Why originally he thought that the gold was the money, and now he knows that the silver is the money. When I say gold and silver, I mean the coins. So the Aldus of my silver is like this of my silver. What what did he hold? What did Rebbe hold when he was young that he held then that the gold was the money, and now when he's old, he holds that the silver is the money. So Bialdumar says Bialdusa Savar in when he was young, Savar, Dava the Khashiv, gold, which is more valuable, Habe Tiva. That's the money. Gold is more valuable. What's the most important thing? What do people want? They want money. By Kasvalo Khashiv, silver, which is less valuable, Habe Pira, Habe Pira. That's the produce, the merchandise. The Karnal Pera Tava. And therefore, merchandise acquires the, the money. And since the um, uh, since the silver is less valuable, that's the merchandise. So he made a kenyan on the silver coins, you acquire the gold coins. There's like new say silver, but when he's old, when he's old silver, and you know, it's no caspa, the silver money, the kharif, which circulates more, it's more current, it's real currency, habitiva, david al gold, which is not as current. And that could be in, in depending on your locality, right? Depending on your locality, it's probably true today too. If you have a silver coin. If you have a silver, I, I would say, I don't even know, do they have silver do, silver dollars still in America? Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. silver dollars. Who has a gold dollar? <laughs> right? Uh, only the, you know, a silver dollars probably are more, are more a better currency. At least if you have a silver dollar, you know it's worth a dollar. If you have a gold dollar, you don't even know what it's worth, right? Probably silver dollars are more current. You know it's worth what? But, okay, but the average guy in the street, I mean, I mean, if you go into a store, and you gave them a silver dollar, they know they know it's a dollar. You come in, you come with a gold dollar, and you say this is worth you know 50 silver dollars. He doesn't, he's not gonna know that. Yeah, yeah. So of course it's worth more, but you don't know what it's worth. The average guy in the street will not know what it's worth. So what's more, what's more currency? You know, you silver dollar, you know what it is. So here's the same thing. So he says now silver, which is more current, is more circulates more. That's the money. David Alokharuk. Gold, which is not, it doesn't circulate as as commonly. Have a pair, that's the merchandise. But kind of a pair of the top. And therefore, merchandise, as we said, acquires the money. Money does not acquire merchandise when it comes to movables. Okay, that's what we said. So our Mishnah said, though, that gold is the merchandise. Silver coins are the money. Amr Vashi, now we're going to see other opinions. Amr Vashi, ki al se It's more likely, he wants to say, it's more likely that what Rebbe said when he was younger, that the silver was the merchandise and the gold was the coins is more likely. Why? Why did he go on to say after the gold and the silver, he went that the copper also acquires the kesef, the nechoshis is the merchandise. Yeah, If you say that silver compared to gold, silver is the merchandise, the produce, to tell you, oh, even though silver is considered merchandise compared to the gold, gold is the coins, Right, gold is the money. I like I've been a chosha stuff. I've been compared to uh, copper. Uh, Kesef is the is the coins. That's teaching you something. A chosha is the merchandise. Kesef is the money. Eliyam et kaspel gavidava teva. Have if you say like our Mishnah reads that the gold that the silver is considered the money. So hashdal gavidava the chosha be the compared to gold, which is more uh, valuable than silver. It's considered coins. Amr. Amritiv, uh, I mean, silver coin. The government choshes the choshev compared to copper, where silver is more valuable than copper. The choshev and it circulates more. Certainly, me boy, it should be considered coins. What are you telling me that for? What's the chiddush in that? 
So it's, uh, it's uh, 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 so, uh, boy, is there any question about that? Why did you have to tell them the is is Of course, Kesa, of course, uh, uh, Kesa compared the Choshes as coins because number one, it's more valuable. Number two, it circulates more. What's the Kiddush in that? If you tell me that, uh, so that silver is coins compared to gold, certainly it's coins compared to Nechoshes. Says the Gemara, says the Gemara, no, it's Ruch. You still need it. Not necessarily true. It could very well be that the silver is, is the coins and is not the merchandise, not the merchandise, and still you need it. Why? Sometimes I might think, honey, Preeti Basra, these copper coins in a city, the Sagi, not as many times, you know, when we were young, Pennies were more common than quarters, let's say, right? People had pennies. So here, Hani Priti, Ba'asra de Sagi, that uh, were in a city where they circulate a lot. Inu Kharifa, they're more circul they, they circulate more that famous more than silver. Amir Tabab, I might think that the Khoshes is a it could very well be that compared to uh compared to uh Zohav, compared to gold, silver really is more current. But I might think that when it comes to copper, copper is more current. In certain cities, that copper is circulates more than silver. So I might think that the copper should be considered the coins and the silver should be considered the merchandise. Kamash Malon teaching us, there are places where the copper doesn't circulate hardly at all. Therefore, this, therefore, the Choshes is considered, and generally, it's considered, it's considered produce or merchandise. And therefore, that's okay. So it's not really a proof from there. So we don't that's, have minimum. We don't have, yeah, we don't have minimum. Bafra Bhia Subar, right, right. You could say it's like more, but you have to make some rules, you know, and that's why there are different differences rules. Well, what's more, what's considered money? Gold or coin, gold coins or silver coins. That's the debate over here. We see different opinions. Bafra Bhia Savar, even Rabhi Savar that he wants to so this this proof that Ravashi said that uh, it's more likely that the silver is the merchandise. Uh, that was discounted. But then we want to bring another proof, and we're going to discount that too. But from even if he held that what? That gold was considered the coin, the money, not the silver, as we saw in our mission. Why? To Rav Chia, Ozef didn't me bar, to Rav rather. Rav borrowed some money. Rav Ozef didn't me bar, said Rav Chia. Rav had borrowed some money, some dinner, Zohav. Dinner here, we means dinner, Zohav. A dinner, Zohav, we see is like 25 dinner kassavs. Uh, he borrowed some money, then uh, some gold money from the daughter of Mibasa Priya, from the daughter of Priya, and Lasov Aikudani. Then what happened was is that the uh, coins, in other words, to buy a dinner zov costs more uh, dinner kesefs later on. It went up in value. It's like saying, uh, what can I tell you? It's like saying that um, uh, to buy a dollar, so maybe a bad example, but it's like to buy a dollar, you need more shekels now. Give us some, some, you know, a view. Um, so he had borrowed a gold dinner from the daughter of Chia, and then when he went to return it, let's so if I could turn it, the cost of dinners, these golds went up. Also, he came before of Chia, he had borrowed the money from Chia's daughter, and he came, and Rav asked for Chia, it was his uncle, um, is there a problem of ribis over here? Because when I borrowed the dinner, it was worth X amount of silver coins. Now it takes more silver coins to buy it. So maybe there's a question of ribis over here, uh, you know, is a ribis one way or another. I'm giving you something now that it's worth more. Go give, go pay her with a good dinner zov. Weighed out perfectly, it's fine. Now, if you say that the gold is the coin, the gold is the money, rather. Of course, it's a coin. The gold is the money. It makes sense. If I borrow a dollar and pay back a dollar, there's no problem with that. If I borrow a silver dollar or a gold dollar, whatever it was, if I take money, if it's money, so what's the difference what it's worth now? You need more francs or more euros to buy it or whatever. Uh, but I, I, it's a dollar. If that's the coin, that's the coin. That's the money. Eliyam and Peirav, if you say it's merchandise, how they saw the saw? The rabbis made it to kind of, you know, straight out interest is I borrow a dollar, I pay back a dollar ten. That's ribbis. I'm paying, I'm paying more money for the time that I kept the money, the time value of money. Now, if I borrow a bushel, from you and I take back and I borrow a bushel and I pay you back a bushel, the rabbi said, don't do that. It's not really ribbis so right? So, but the rabbi said it's not so good because when you borrow, because these things fluctuate in value all the time. So if I borrow a bushel, it was worth a dollar. When I pay it back, it was worth a dollar ten. That looks like ribbis. The rabbis forbade that. Well, so if you say, say pardon? Uh, uh, so, so you say you converted it to, into money. You say, let's say 
I'm paying you back. I'm paying you back a bushel at X amount of money. You you quantify it. You turn it into money and say, I'm, I owe you a dollar's worth of, of produce and I'll pay you back a dollar's worth of produce. Right? You got to be careful with that. So so he, so if you say that this Diener Zov, he said, just pay him back. He borrowed a Diener Zov and he paid him back, a, paid her back a Diener Zov. Now, if you say that the dinners of that's the coin, that makes sense. But if you say the dinners of is merchandise, well, when you borrow merchandise and you pay back with the same merchandise, that's a problem, Bosser. The answer is no. It's a, and therefore, it must be that Rafi also held that, um, that a dinners of is, is money. It's not merchandise. It's not considered merchandise. Says the Gemara, no. Rav, dinner have The truth is, this isn't a problem. You know why? Because you're a, even the Isra of saw the saw of a bushel that I can't borrow a bushel and pay back with bushels. That's only if I don't have a bushel at that time. But let's say I have a bushel, but it's in the barn, the barn's locked. Or my kid has it and he's bringing it back. It's got someone. That's okay because I really have it. Then it's not, then Rabban Ra, didn't make a, a takana there. Rashi says, um, Rashi says here, then Shalova Sailu, we got be saw the saw tonight. We learned Avalamala, lend me, lend me a saw until my son comes home with her, until I find the key. That's okay. Uh, that's okay. Because you don't say uh Shail Shabiyoto Niknan Mamava Vashusa Hukra, the river saw the saw drawbana, but I got the 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 saw the saw is only a draw button. Borrowing a bushel and paying back a bushel. The rabbi said that it could go, it can fluctuate in value. So it looks like us don't do that. Convert it into money. But uh, but in this case, where I had the bushel, it's just the, the, the barn's lock, the Rabbanan didn't matter the kind of there. So here too, Rav Dinner Havile, he actually had a dinner saw. Keeping the Havile Dinner, since he had Nasika Omel, it's as if he said, It's as if he said, listen, just give me uh, the dinner until I find the key or until my kid comes home with the money. And therefore, this is also no proof that um, that uh, that the dinner, that uh, that Rafia held that a dinner saw is merchandise. It's really coins. It's 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 really uh, it's. I'm sorry. Not proof that Rafia held that it's money. We're going to say Rafia held that it's money. No, it could be that it was merchandise. But he had it, and it, he had the dinner in his possession. He just didn't have the key, or his kid, kid was coming home with it. Therefore, it was okay. So both these cases would not be a proof. Would not be a proof that uh, like like Rebbe's opinion when he was young that the dinner was the coin. And was the money and the silver was the merchandise. Amar Rabbah, high Tana Savar Davatava. The following Tana holds that the gold is the money, the Tanya. Pruta Shamru, Echad, a Pruta, we say, we talk about a Pruta. What is the other Pruta? Echad Mishmana Bisir Taki. You want to know what a Pruta is? It's one eighth of an Italian Isser. Mine of Kamina, the Kedusha Isha, as we saw in the beginning of Kedushan. Kadash Nisha with a Pruta Shava Pruta. Remember, the rabbi always asks, is it worth the Shava Pruta? Is it worth the Shava Pruta? You hold like Basil, it's got to be worth the Shava Pruta. Okay, so we want to know what a Pruta is. That's one eighth of an Italian answer. So if, you, if you're if you a with something not worth the Shava Pruta, it doesn't work. How much is an Isser? Isser is Echabi Asar, the Echabi Asar, Rabbi one twenty fourth of a silver dinner. One twenty fourth. Mine of Kamina, make a member. Because you say, I'm paying you with an Isser, you have to know what it's worth. Dinner shall kesef. How much is a dinner? Uh, uh, not a uh, not a uh, yes, sir, but a dinner of kesef. How much is that? Echem yisrim mechamesh dinner shows up. It's one twenty fifth of the dinner is up. My nafkemina lepidyan haben. How much do you have to pay for a pidyan haben? Five shekels, right? Five shekels. The shekel in the Torah. The Torah says shekel. It's the Gemara's sella. A sella is four dinners. So therefore, therefore. If a, a when you if if you if a cell is four dinners, which means a shekel in Torah is four dinners, you pay the coin how many? Five shekels. That's twenty dinners, right? Twenty dinners. Okay. He says over here that what is twenty dinners? Twenty dinners is four fifths of a dinner's of. That means you always when you pay to your son from the coin, it's always four fifths of the dinner's of. Okay. Now yeah, my fish on the top. Now listen to this carefully. He says how much is a how much is a Dinner of Kasef, it's one twenty-fifth of a dinner of Zov. Okay. Now, therefore, he says, in other words, that the dinner Zov is the is the money. That's the dollar that we're talking about. The dinner Zov is the money. Why? Meaning that you always pay the coin four fifths of a dinner Zov, no matter what the what what it costs now to pay a dinner Zov. Dinner Zov is normally twenty-five dinner Kasefs, but sometimes, let's say, it got the uh, the dinner Kasefs got worth more. Maybe for 20 dinner kesefs, you could buy a dinner zav. Or if it got worth less, maybe it takes 30 dinner kesefs to buy a dinner zav. But if you establish a dinner zav as the coin, and you say you always have to pay the coin four fifths of a dinner zav, 
no matter how many dinner kesefs are in there, you have to pay four fifths of dinner's off because that's the coin. Yeah, if you say that the dinner's off is the money, that's the money. So Mashar Tana, but media the kiss. So the Tana assesses how much you say, what is a dinner's off? It's the uh, uh, dinner kesef is what? 20, 125th of a dinner's off. The dinner's off is the money. That's the currency. It might have less or more, you might, depending on the fluctuation in the in the in the financial markets. You might take more or less dinner kesef to buy dinners of, but dinners of is the money. So you say, okay, you pay four fifths that. El yam and pay rabbi. If you say that the dinners of is simply merchandise, and what counts really is the dinner kesef, is the kesef. So mishar tana bemidi the okra Brazil. You're going to be mishar something which goes up and down. You know, it's the, that's like considered the merch that can go up and down. Similar to mahara like the kana. Sometimes the kana will have to give him back. Meaning, if you say that the coin, you always have to pay twenty dinner kesefs. And if you pay with a dinner zov, um, sometimes it, it, it can fluctuate. Sometimes you'll have to give the coin, the coin will have to give you change. Because in the most of the kind of sometimes you'll have to add more to the coin because you're saying you have to pay the the value of four fifths of a dinner zov, no matter how many dinner kesefs that takes, right? If you say if if a dinner kesef goes up to um, uh, to thirty dinner kesefs. For uh, to, the dinner zov, and you got to pay four fifths of a dinner zov. So uh, four fifths of that would be how much? Twenty four dinner kesefs you'd have to pay now. And that's not what we say. We say dinner zov. Dinner zov is is uh, the is the is the uh, coin. That's the money, and you have to pay four fifths of that, whatever it is. And economy, if it goes up, you pay. So elishmami not. In other words, if you say that the dinner. Zob is simply like merchandise, like produce. So we wouldn't set up a, a, a fix that we wouldn't set up a fix. We want a fixed amount. So you say, you know, it's always four fifths of a dinner Zob. That's a fixed amount. But if you say, I'm a pay rob, I'm a shower, I'm a media, the Oka Zob, something's worth more, something's worth less. Something's you'll have to add on, something's you'll have to add less. And therefore, we don't. So this Tana Taka is, does hold that the uh, dinner Zob is the coin, that's the money, etc. Rashi points out like this Rashi is a shower, I'm a media, the kids. Maybe a time is only by for 20. Yasul a coin, he's got to give him back fifth of that. Give him back a fifth of that. In other words, you always have to pay a coin four fifths of a dinner zov, whatever that is, whatever it comes out to be. Normally it's 25 dinner, but it might go through, it might go up to 30, in which case you got to give them more, right? And if, if it goes, if it's, if it's only worth, uh, if the dinner zov is uh, now only worth, let's say, uh, is, is worth 20 uh, dinner kesefs, fine. So you give them four fifths of that. So you, you, you know, so you give them 16 then, right? As you give, because it's always four fifths of the dinner zov. So that shows that the dinner zov is the money and the kesef is the one that fluctuates. That's considered the merchandise. Then also we learn else when we talk about Meister Shani. Now Meister Shani, you know, you have produce in Tel Aviv or, or, or Haifa, whatever. You got to bring it to Shlaim. So you turn it into money. It says, Bitzar Ta Kesef, or you tie it up and turn it into money. Right? So what Bashami says, Omer, Lo Yasa, Adam, Sloin, Dinar Zav. You shouldn't turn your, let's say you had, you had turned the uh, produce into uh, silver coins, sellers. You should then buy dinner zovs with it because then you're going from coin to produce. You can go from produce to coin. You can't go from coin to produce. Uh, to produce. Based on material, because you're allowed to. Rabbi Yochum Shlokish Chad explained the machlokis. Chad of a machlokis b'slam shal dinner. That's when you're going from silver to gold. Silver to gold, you shouldn't do. Why? Because gold, a court right to beshami sabre kaspa david. Silver is the coin and dav is the parent, and gold is the merchandise. Like our Mishnah said, right? You don't you don't redeem go, uh, coins in uh, uh, onto the payer lo machlin. obviously when you get to Yerushalayim, you buy with with the money you buy food. But on the way to Yerushalayim, on your way you can't change coins into produce because you got to turn produce into coins. But still, so we know Kasla payer the silver is merchandise compared is produce compared to the uh, to the gold. Vedava, vedava, tiva, and the gold is the is the money. Therefore, you can exchange, you can redeem uh, the produce for money. But actual produce, 
for 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 dinrin, and that you can definitely do because compared to real produce, that then dinners of even a dinners of is considered coins compared to produce, and produce you could redeem onto coins, which is what you normally do when you have produce in Haifa, you turn it into coins. So everybody would agree, according to this, what's one sheet of it? If I turn the uh, pr the fruits and vegetables that I had in Haifa into gold coins, redeem them for gold coins, and then I could take the gold coins and redeem it onto silver coins, possibly, right? You could do silver coins. Why? Because, but 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 uh, Beishamai says that uh, you shouldn't turn your silver coins into gold coins. Beishol says you can even turn your silver coins into gold coins. Okay, so he's saying like this, everybody agrees, according to one opinion, everybody agrees that payers on dinner and dinner call you could do because vegetables or actual produce for dinners, that's certainly going from merchandise onto coins. My time in media of Kesef, the Basil. Just like what does Basil say with Kesef? Kesef, Basil, Alpha Gav, the Kaspa, Gavi, Dava, Peri, even though that silver compared to gold, according to Basil, silver is the merchandise, the Gavi Peri, but compared to produce, Tevavi is considered. Coins, because that's what you did. You can, you could, you turned your produce in Haifa uh, onto silver coins, and then the silver coins you could change onto payros, uh, onto onto real, on, uh, and then the uh, silver coins rather. You turn your, your, you're right. You can turn the silver coins onto gold coins. You turn your produce onto silver coins, and your silver coins onto gold coins. You got repair with tevavi. Zov nam in the Gold, according to beishamay, who says that what that's that's considered produce. Afikav the dafu gavi pasu even though the gold compared to silver is payroll, so you can't turn your silver into gold because you got to go always towards coinage when it comes to Maizashani. The Gabi Peira compared to real payrus, compared to real produce, Tivahavi, even compared to real uh, compared to real produce, uh, the gold is considered coins. That's one way to learn the Machlokas. That even for payrus, Beishamai would say you can't even turn payros onto dinner, that even compared to produce, a dinner is also produce, and you can't do that. Machlokas. So Zimor says, Laman Damar, Af, but payros al dinner, Machlokas, the Beishamai says you can't even turn uh, produce into dinner zavs, because dinner zav is produce. So Adam, if you respond, why why say, why is the Machlokas based on Beishamai that this Mishnah starts with? Why do you talk about silver coins onto gold coins? Lift your Beishamai al dinner. Say the machlokas is even my fruits on dinner. If Beisol, if Beishami says you can't even turn silver coins into gold coins, right? Because gold is considered produce, and he says even payrus is considered produce, and, and I mean payrus, pay, even, even that gold is considered produce even compared to other produce. So lift your payrus al dinner to tell me that the, even there Beishami says you can't turn produce into gold coins. Is if the payrus and if the machlokas would be by payrus themselves on dinner. And there we, we say that Paris you can't turn into, into dinners of because it's Paris for Paris. It's not you have, you have to go towards coinage, towards money when it comes to my Sushani. I will be slan al dinner, but when it's silver money for gold money, maybe modal and basil of maybe it also motor the double the gabi cost for payer. That gold compared to silver is also considered Paris. In other words, maybe only the machlokas is by Paris on dinner. The Paris. Beisham, Beisham says you can't turn papers onto dinner, and Beisol says you could. But maybe when it comes to uh, turning silver into gold, then maybe Beisham, Beisol would be motivated to Beisham by that that's not good. The Gavag of Pera, the Pera Sabbath, meaning Beisham, Beisol would say that dinner and for papers you could, right? Papers are dinner and you could do because dinner and Zov compared to papers, dinner and is coin. But when it comes to silver compared to uh, gold, maybe Beisol would be motivated to Beisham that that is considered mer that the gold compared to the silver, the gold is considered the merchandise, and and therefore you can't turn the silver coins into gold coins. Kamash Mulan, the Velo Machalin, and Kamash Mulan, that we don't say that. That Beisham Beisol says that you could turn you could turn uh, gold coin, you could turn so rather silver okay. coins into gold coins, because Beisol says that silver compared to gold, silver is the merchandise, and gold is considered the coins. So uh, so the Gemara now is going to try to prove uh, does, uh, who holds what. He says, Machlokas are built from Mishlokesh. What is the Machlokas between Beisol and Beishamai? The first opinion we said was that everybody's moda that Peyrus, the Gabi Dinrin, you could change, right? Because Peyrus is certainly produce compared to gold, uh, gold coins. And therefore, you could change Peyrus onto gold coins. 
The other machlok is there, the machlok is in both, whether even Paris on dinner, you wouldn't be able to. Who says what? The Gemara is going to try to prove that tomorrow's stuff. Tomorrow's stuff is stuff, and then they picks it up from here, these two lines on the bottom of the page to Siam, Rabbi Elkanan, and it'll be on the podcast. And on Sunday, Merz Hashem, we pick it up from the 11th line on Mem Vav Aleph. From the 11th line on Mem Vav Kil, there's one Indian. From the 11th line on uh, where Gemara says over there, Rapapa, Bafra Papa, we'll pick that up on Mem Vav Aleph on Sunday, Merz Hashem. Shabbat Shalom, Lekulam. Shabbat Shalom.